Not everything's all sunshines and rainbows on with for me. Ah, oh, yo, Tracy. Yeah. I'm not very well. Uh, will you carry me downstairs? Oh my God. So here's an interesting fact. This video is not the video I had planned for this week. Yay. This is me winging it because something unexpected yet exciting happened. I'm completely burnt out. It's funny how things happen when you push yourself out of your comfort zone. And now here I am making an unplanned indoor cycling video, all because I didn't fancy racing and I decided to climb a mountain on my indoor trainer instead, for fun. I'm not racing today, I'm gonna to do something different. So I've decided today, instead of doing an FTP test, I'm going to climb Alp de Zwift at the start of the Alp de Zwift. In August last year, I did something indoors instead of going outdoors because it was raining. For anyone that doesn't know, ADZ has literally become one of my most favourite things to do, mainly because I lead a very dull life and I haven't yet discovered stamp collecting. Okay guys, I'm dying. Corner eight. Just want to keep the RPM up, but... I'm failing miserably. Now, if I'm having a bad week, I know that the pain and suffering of the Minecrafty Alp is there waiting for me like a warm hug from a rescue cat. You know you're probably doing the right thing by rescuing a cat, but you also know that at any moment it will switch and scratch your eyes out for absolutely no reason whatsoever, but you still adopt it anyway because you have children. Wow. <laughs> Okay, all right, shh, shh, shh. I'm talking from experience as this warm ball of fluff is completely back crazy, exactly like my relationship without the Zwift on Zwift. You're not crazy, are you? You're not gonna scratch. I'm just saying it for dramatic effect for the video. Am I doing you a disservice? Yeah, all right, I'm gonna put you down now. You can go back to sleep. I know, right, don't scratch me. I've probably got cat fur all over me now. This video, first time climbing out to Zwift, was the first one of my Zwift videos, or any of my videos for that matter, to blow up, or at least have more people watch it than just my mum, for which I am eternally grateful for those of you that watched it. Thank you very much. Having never ridden out to Zwift before and only ever seen YouTubers complete it with relative ease, because of course, any people that are stupid enough to put it out on YouTube are the ones that can do it really well. I thought, how hard could it be? 2020 23 Ryan thought this as he started the climb for the first time. Come on. Now it turns out it is really bloody hard. So in August last year, I completed it for the first yes. time in one hour and 47 minutes. And I was really, really proud of that time. Yes. I've done out to Swift in 100 and seven minutes. Nowhere near the times I'd seen other faster, fitter, stronger Zwifting YouTubers complete it in. And even though I got loads of positive feedback, tips, advice, etc., in the comments on that video, the comment section really did speak out by the way. Hopefully in this video, you will see just how much I listened. However, I was really proud of that one hour and 47 minutes. That was the benchmark and I knew I could only get better. Okay, today's video is gonna be a really, really good one. I say that about all my videos, but today is gonna to be especially good. I'm gonna to attempt to climb out to Zwift for the umpteenth time and get a PB. This slow meander up out to Zwift kickstarted my love affair with this feral beast. I knew I couldn't get any slower. It also realigned my over-enthusiastic expectation of riding up it in under 16 minutes. 16 what? of riding up it in under 60 oh minutes. What a school boy error. Let's try that again. Oh, I can't believe I just did that. I need to pull it back. Corner 15. I have no idea if I'm doing well or not. I'm starting to grind. Trying my best. A sub one hour time seems to be the holy grail of benchmarks. Sub 60 has been on my bucket list ever since I discovered it was a thing, but back to today's story. Everything I've done on Zwift up till now has been with one goal, become more efficient up this mountain, ultimately resulting in a faster time. There we go. Almost exactly 12 minutes slower than my PB. 
Oh, I'm going to have to lie on the floor for a minute. Having now caught the bug and returning for a second attempt only two weeks later, this is my second attempt to get to the top of it in a reasonable time. I don't have it. I don't have it. I wanted to get it under 100, but I didn't have it. Now knowing what to expect and smashing out a significantly fast time of one hour and 40 minutes, seven minutes quicker, just because I knew what to expect, I knew that I was probably at my threshold now and needed to train, get better at cycling in general. I then did a few more runs up Alp and achieved 92 minutes in December last year. <laughs> That PB then held strong until March of this year, ah! where I smashed my 92 minute PB uh, by seven minutes. This is getting confusing. And I was now on 85 minutes as a PR or PB. What's this called 18? Try to push through the corner if you can. Take advantage of the flat. That was until one of my epic races, where I asked Eric Lee from Don't Get Drop Cycling to pace me up the out. Now I gotta catch you. He won't be home, mate. Look at all the friends and family we got here. Oh, Eric. Ah. Nah, it doesn't hurt at all, man. It doesn't hurt at all. Nothing hurts. It's gonna hurt a lot more if you don't see 80 or less. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, man. He just shouted at me the whole time and I nearly beat the 80 minute threshold. But again, this took everything I had. Brother, you're gonna shit your pants when you find out how fast you're going up out the Zwift right now. I love this right now. I love it. Don't forget, you gotta take this vegan out, man. Make him eat a steak. Push, 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 push. Keep going. Ah! Keep going. I f up. I did wonder why Eric was still shouting at me, but in my exhaustion and my brain fog state, I fully stop at 95 meters before the end. Eric, I stopped. 80, Sub 80 was tantalizingly close, but I knew was just out of reach. I don't think I could have repeated the effort I put in in that attempt. We're just over 50 meters from 4,000 meters and I'm dying. I am literally dying. I then tried to Everest on Zwift, which the less said about that, the better. No PBs were smashed that day. Okay, let's finish it and start, shall we? That's all I got. I then did loads of stuff outdoors because it was a summer and only returned to ADZ in September, hoping for a new sub 80 minute PB. Having only just run 100K Ultra the week before, I probably wasn't in optimum condition for a max effort up the Alp, but I gave it a shot anyway and achieved 92 minutes. It was a step backwards, 12 minutes slower than my existing PB. Almost exactly 12 minutes slower than my PB. I'm gonna go and lie on the shot. I'm gonna go and lie on the shower floor. I'm gonna go and lie on the shower floor. 12 minutes slower. Was 80 minutes gonna be my forever PB? Right, so today's video is my Alps Zwift PB attempt. Got no easier way of saying that. I did it just over two months ago. My 90 day PR, well it's not a 90 day PR, but my 90 day attempt was over 92 minutes. My PB is just over 80 minutes, which I did many many months ago now and I did just over 80 minutes so I'm hoping to beat that today I am lighter I'm now 89.4 kg I am faster mainly because I'm lighter but also I am stronger so yeah this should be fun okay guys so I'm on a racing bike I'm going to change it to a climbing bike I also have my climbing gears set up Please don't ask me to explain the gear thing past this description as I have no idea, except that they massively help with my in the saddle consistency when doing attempts like this. Basically the virtual gears are the equivalent of having climbing gears on your IRL bike. This is something new, actually thinking about my attempt tactically before I attempt it rather than just smashing my way up. I changed my avatar's bike and wheels to a climbing bike. Lighter means a faster time. And I changed my virtual gears from being standard racing gears to climbing gears this just means I have a higher or lower range to choose from on the steeper section so I can spin more and grind less I've got nine and a half thousand meters to go until I get the um, Tron bike okay I can see my 90 day PR ghost which I should be today that shouldn't be that much of a challenge 
was not in a good place when I did that two and a half months ago. So as I start the climb and feeling optimistic, considering my 90 day PR was not hard to be, I decided to concentrate on trying to hold my watts at or above 250 for as long as possible. I'm trying to get my RPM up. So even though I was doing this for fun, I knew I'd grown in power, my FTP had increased and I've lost weight. So I wanted to set a new PR that was significantly better than my last 90 day PR, which won't be hard. But I also had a sub 80 time in my head as my target, something I haven't yet achieved as my best time is just over 80 minutes. My trainer difficulty is set to 100% as I like to feel the resistance and I tried to focus on spinning at a higher cadence, initially focusing on 250 watts. These were my tactics. This is what I did before the race. So I knew 250 watts was optimistic but if i aim for the stars i might i might hit the moon okay that's the worst corner done corner one or corner 21 if you're counting down is by far the worst corner on the alp and that was now out of the way i had smashed it but unlike on previous attempts where i had previously gone through it at 300 400 watts i hadn't gone too hard too early i'd only pushed 270 watts to this point and i could now settle into the ride you have to ignore my average uh, because obviously I stopped to mess about with cameras and change bikes in the lead-in on the course. The quickest way to get to the Alp is on the road to Sky Route. It has like a 4k lead-in. Now I just want to quickly say that my average watts that you can see on screen is a red herring and I'm trying really hard to ignore this as it includes the slow 4k zone 2 warm up from the start of the route to the start of the Alp and it also includes stopping to mess about with the bike and the wheels at the bottom. The large timer on the top right corner also includes this all, all the faffing around so ignore that as well. The time I'm focused on is the small clock ticking away at the bottom of the main bar on screen. This started when I crossed the Alp de Zwift com marker at the bottom. This time will hopefully be my new PR, but I still have to get to the top of the mountain as quickly as possible. Corner two was 240 watts and a very good time. Corner three was 249 watts. Things were looking good and I was starting to settle into the ride. I felt really good at this time and I knew that my time up till this point was also really good. subsequent five or six corners were all in the high 240s however by corner 12 I was starting to feel the effort in my legs my heart rate was still really good so I decided rather than blow up halfway which has happened before I'd focus on hitting 230 watts instead of the 250 I'd been aiming for up to this point I decided to allow my body to dictate my pace rather than my mind I then hit the halfway point of the climb, corner 10, only slightly over 30 minutes. I know 33 minutes isn't quite there yet, but I was scarily close to pacing a sub 60 minute attempt for the first half. This was the quickest I'd ever reached this point before. When I say quickest, I mean significantly quicker. There were occasions where I did stand up. I did this on purpose, not to push or surge, but mainly to use different muscles and also to give my bum a break out of the saddle. I also just want to quickly say that I'm really starting to get to grips with this new rocker plate. I feel like I've turned a corner with it and it does feel like it's massively helping me. Doing this ride will help me decide if I'm going to keep using it and spoilers as this is post edit i am well i am going to keep using it for the foreseeable i just got my head down i kept pushing and stayed focused on 230 watts i just wanted to get a sub 80 to beat my existing pr of 80 minutes and 30 odd seconds Come on.
Now, it was only when I hit corner three and I got my faculties together that I realized that I was on for a sub 70 minute PR. Not only had I smashed my old PR set during Ryan's epic race, but I was potentially on for a sub 70 minute. And a sub 70 minute PR is uncomfortably close to 60 minutes. This is mental. What has happened to me? Ah. I'm waiting here for you. tiny sprint always sprint for a finish line I crossed it and set a brand new PR of just over 71 minutes I've done it I beat my sub 80 minute target I'm now only 11 minutes and change away from a sub 60 minute time. That blows my mind. I know 11 minutes is a really long way, but considering where I'd started only 16 months ago to now, that's mental. Uh, guys, uh, that's everything I had. That's everything. I just put everything into that. What was even my time? I don't know. 71 minutes something. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love Alps Swift, but that is one brutal climb. I am that close to being sub 70. That is mental. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one. All I really need is a little motivation to pull you from the other side. What I need to show you is my obligation. How much longer